What's going on, folks? Thanks for joining me on another episode of Duck Gun Chronicles. This week, we're going to be going over the layout. Boom. So it's going to be five things to think about when you're purchasing a, buy, a layout boat or five tips if you're already into it. First thing, I think the most important thing when you're thinking about getting a kayak, a hybrid canoe, a canoe, a layout, um, you want to look at the storage, the way you're going to be able to get out there and hunt. Are you going to be able to get everything you need out to a spot and hunt successfully? So. Um, I did a video on this last year talking about a canoe and one of the biggest benefits of a canoe is that you can get tons of gear in there um, and get it from one spot to the other. And for me, it's a little different than most people because I always, almost always bring my dog. So I gotta have room for my dog, gotta have room for a ton of decoys, gotta have room for your gun obviously, your blind bag, and then your dog and yourself. And those are the main thing. I'm trying to think if I forgot anything. but you know, we're in the middle of off season, so it's been a while since I hunted, but those would be the main things that I'd worry about. Those are all things that you want to make sure when you're deciding what one you want to go with, if it is compatible with your style, with the amount of decoys you want to take, with everything else you got going on. So that's, for me, that's probably one of the biggest things because you don't have to hunt out of it unless it is a layout or a tag or a hybrid like this. It is definitely a plus, which brings us to the second one. And the second one is um, concealment. So concealment is huge if you're gonna hunt and do a layout hunting style, which this year, I'm super pumped to be heading in that direction, trying it out. Uh, gonna be going down to Kansas, down and over, whatever you wanna call it, to Kansas, and trying out the layout hunting style. Never done it, always just stood in the brush or something like that, but Elliot has been singing, to, singing its praises, saying how good it is to layout hunt in the water. So I'm gonna give that a shot. And I definitely got spots here in Indiana where I can get on some wood duck holes or other water locations where I can get tucked up in the brush, get real concealed and hide. And so one of the biggest things, the only, the only layout blind, boat blind that I know of is the redhead layout blind. So um, for me, if you're gonna do the layout hunting with a hybrid or a canoe, you need to, need to make sure that one, you either can make a really, really good layout or buy one of those. Um, so we talked about this a lot, and this is another thing I forgot to mention. We talked about this a ton in the um, podcast that me and Elliot just released this week. I'll put a link if you guys want to check that out. Um, but our topic this week was layout hunting, um, layout boat hunting to be specific. So one thing we talked about is Elliot's homemade blind and how he wasn't able to um, really get concealed, he could get it up to his chest, but then switching over to the redhead um, layout boat blind, they could really cover their face, everything, and so it's just just their face sticking out of there, and they could really, really bring the birds in a lot closer. So I would highly recommend that you get something that is compatible with the redhead layout blind, um, and you might just have to do some testing on that if you got a buddy who's got one or if you know of somebody else who has um, a boat that works with it, then that's great. So if I know right now that the top water works with it from Old Town. This Old Town, um, the solo canoe from Old Town right here, it also works great. And the way I saw that originally was um, Outdoor Limit put a video with it. So I'll put a link down in the description too if you want to see his thing. And I actually purchased one of these and I'll be trying it out on mine as well. So stay tuned for a video that as well. So concealment, it's just, if you're going to lay out hunt, you might as well do it right, in my opinion. Get the redhead blind, put it on your boat, or get one that works with it. Um, so the next thing that brings it to it, another thing that is not going to be for everybody, but a big thing for me is hunting with my dog. So um, there's a couple options here. You can either make your blind compatible, stick your dog behind you back here um, when you're hunting. And uh, Elliot has a, a really good hood system where you can put his dog behind him, but then you get wet and the dog's jumping over you. Um, if, if that doesn't bother you and it doesn't bother him at all, then that works great. Um, for me, I love using the Momarsh. Now, that is an extra expense and somewhat of a luxury when you could just have just your, your um, system for him sitting behind you or just a tarp sitting on him. Um, but yeah. That's definitely a luxury, and since I already have mine for dog training and other hunting purposes, I'm definitely gonna throw it on here and uh, get that out, set it up right next to me, and that'll be 
what my go-to is for the dog next year. So if you don't have a dog, you don't have to worry about it. Um, for me, that's another good reason for the big canoe. Um, and if you're getting a kayak and you want a dog, it's just another thing to think about how you're going to get your dog out there when you're hunting. So another thing to think about it, whether you're just getting into it or you've already done it, um, when you're thinking about this, can, this actually goes into a couple things, so I'll combine it, but stability of um, your craft, you know, the longer you get, um, the more stable, the longer and wider you're going to get on your canoe, kayak, um, layout boat, the more stable it's going to be. So that's definitely something to consider when you're looking into it. Um, but the thing about getting a longer and wider one, it, um, it's almost always going to cost you more to, um, to go up in that. But it is, you know, with going up in it, in size and length, it does have its payoffs because you're going to get what you pay for. You're going to pay for something that's a little bit more expensive, but you're going to get something that you're going to get more use out of because you're going to enjoy it more. Um, and you're going to have better shooting from something that's stable. Uh, and it's... From what I've heard, I've not done it myself, but I believe it just from laying out and hunting on the ground, I think it's harder shooting. So definitely going to be harder out of something that gives you a little bit of wobble when you first sit up to shoot the bird, um, not to mention timing and all that kind of stuff. So something to think about when you buy one, you know, maybe spend a little bit more, get something more stable, a little bit longer. Um, you're not going to get a real cheap, you know, sun dolphin or something like that. Um, so that's gonna, you know, pay dividends, get something a little bit more investment. Um, and this one right here is right at the 900 mark. Um, and it's solid. It's a solid craft for what you're paying for, for sure. Uh, the other thing with stability is if you're going to be going on solo hunts, you're going to want something that's safe. So you're not going to fall in, get hypothermia, um, you know, drowned, all the things you worry about going out in a hunt. Uh, especially if you're going on places like a river or anything like that, make sure you're going to get something that's stable. Um, and, you know, another thing is maybe pack everything up and test it out before season if it's your first time going out. A um, little side note story, me and Chief, when he's about six months old, um, testing him out in the canoe for the first time and he tipped us over. So I was really glad that was before season, didn't have all the expensive hunting gear, didn't have a gun in there to lose, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, so definitely make sure stability is huge when it comes to your kayaks and your canoes and your hybrid kayak canoe um, for going out there and hunting and getting there to the spot and when you're at the spot. So the only way you can get around that is if you're really shoved up in the brush and you're tucked in a way where it's not going to move because the brush is holding you. So the last thing I'd suggest on this is if you're new or if you're considering it, you already have stuff for it, you know, just go ahead and give it a shot. Um, you know, there's the one thing that Elliot and I on the, the Duck Nun podcast, we say a lot is you got to have a tool in the tool belt for every job. And uh, having a layout boat is just another way you can get after the birds. When you go scout them, you find them in a spot. If this is the best way to do it and you don't have a layout, then you're not going to be able to hunt them that way. And maybe you go set up a different way and it doesn't work. But, um, you know, if you're thinking about it or if, you, if you're already got some of the stuff and you're thinking about really kind of getting into it, you know, I would suggest it. Um, it's just, like I said, another tool and another way to get after it. And if you get all the tools, you're going to shoot more birds and have, you know, a lot more fun out there hunting all season long. So it's not, I'm not saying it's all about the limits because it's not, but, uh, it's definitely nice to get those birds and avoid the skunks. So I think that's, that's about it. We've got the crop dusters going over there making some racket, but I think that's about it on this video. Make sure if you're new here on the channel, you hit that sub button. If you haven't checked us out on the Duck Gun Podcast, we're putting out content every week. Elliot, freelance duck hunting and I. So, yeah, that's all we got. I'm Jordan, Duck Gun Chronicles, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Let's go.